Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope you're doing great. We got a fitness show today. We're talking to Justin Hall, e3-fitness.com. It's a gym right on the, um, what is it, the west corner-ish of South Broadway in Mississippi. Um, he's a personal trainer, and he has a gym where he offers fitness classes, large and small fitness classes, about 250 members. Great spot. Definitely check him out. And we're also talking to president and CEO of MuscleSound.com, Andy Jackson. Andy Jackson's product is a, it looks like a tablet-based um, ultrasound unit. So he has a SAS model <clears throat> where they use ultrasound to gauge the performance of athletes' mu uh, muscles. He, he's distributed between 40 and 50 teams uh, worldwide and has over 250,000 scans. They just closed a round of angel investment to 1.3 million and are not looking for an exit anytime soon. Super cool, uh, very Colorado uh, episode. I hope you really enjoy it. Welcome to Velocity Business Intelligence with Ryan Estes. In this podcast, we hear founders describe their origin story, economics, and marketing funnels. We run the numbers, sum the blunders, and plot the path to prosperity. Velocity Business Intelligence is brought to you by Talk Launch. Talk Launch takes your revenue to the next level, growing businesses since 2010. TalkLaunch.net. Thanks for joining me, guys. We're rolling. Oh, we're rolling. Okay, good. <laughs> we just come straight into it. Um, I am here at E3 Fitness with Justin, the owner, and Andy, the president and CEO of Muscle Sound. Thank you, guys. Pleasure. You bet. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Um, briefly, kind of who you guys are and how you make money. Let's talk about how Muscle Sound fits in. Now, Muscle Sound is it's a piece of technology, correct? Yeah. Let's get the lowdown. Yeah, I mean, the name kind of gives you the clue that it's uh, an ultrasound-based technology. Originated from two doctors out of CU in Boulder, uh, Dr. San Milan and Dr. John Hill. Uh, Dr. John Hill is an ultrasound specialist at UC Health. Mm -hmm. He was playing around with ultrasound, and Indigo San Milan is a famous cycling coach of lots of famous cycle teams. And they saw a correlation between measuring the changes in your muscle fuel when you use ultrasound in relation to things like biopsy, etc. So instead of you having to stick a needle in your leg to find out what's happening with you, uh, you could use ultrasound in a non-invasive way and really see what was going on with your fuel levels when you were depleting your muscles, whether you were recovering, um, you know, several days, several days after. Okay. Um, and since then, we've moved it on, and you know, here at E3. Uh, we use it heavily to show people inside the fabric of the muscles and you know, see what Justin and the guys are doing and to say, look, hey, look, you're improving. You're reducing body fat. You're increasing lean body mass. You're reducing body fat from your, your stomach. You know, your visceral fat in your stomach is a direct correlation to heart disease. So you start giving people relevant data that relates to some of the aims that they're looking for. Okay, awesome. So uh, what kind of muscle fuels can you see? With the ultrasound. Yeah, so ultrasound in essence measures the changes in fluid within the muscle. So it's looking at the water leaving the muscle when you deplete. And within that, the Wa main fuel is glycogen. or blood? Or no, it's water. It's water. It's water. It's the water. So um, in essence, um, glycogen, muscle glycogen, bonds to three particles of water. Uh, so when you then, in essence, under ultrasound, it's a grayscale. So when it's healthy and full of uh, fuel, it's dark. When it leaves the muscle, it's light. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, so that we can then measure the changes from uh, dark to light. And it was measured against biopsy, so you could see the changes in predominantly carbohydrate and glycogen. But you'd also see in creatine and carotene and some other things that are, that are included within, uh, within water. Interesting. OK, so what, what are some applications of this? You can, is this kind of like to track recovery, to track your gains, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think this, let's take E3 here. So I think the main thing that E3 here do is that they will do 12 weeks. And I was saying to Justin earlier, he did a very clever thing. He created an event so his members know that 12 weeks out that they're going to get tested again. So they know that they're going to see their body fat percentage, the lean body mass. They're going to see where in the body they've 
either lost or gained, you know, gained lean body mass, fantastic. Gained uh, body fat, maybe not so fantastic. But two or three weeks out, they're probably all going, oh my God, here comes the, <laughs> the next testing. So they're probably working out harder. What, what we are providing at Muscle Sound is a look inside the muscle. So, so I, the best comparison is to wearables. You know, yeah. wear, wearable tech, if you think about it, most wearable tech tells you how many steps you did. But the intensity that you do those steps, how you do those steps, what the effect of your body compared to my body of those steps is, is different. And after a while, the majority of people, yeah, I did 10,000 steps today, I did 9,000 yesterday, I did 4,000 the day before, so what? You don't really know what effect that had on your, on your body. When you put professional training like you're getting here at E3, together with professional data that's looking inside your body, you get a good picture of what's happening to you. So it's, it's kind of an accountability method, right? Whereas, uh, wh what's the quote? It's like, if it can be measured, it can be managed. You know, where, where um, the step counters kind of, I, I think have, been, have some success is then you're in a competition with yourself. I gotta get the 10,000 steps. So this is kind of another way to measure that, like I gotta get that dark mass. Right, well, so in, in what, you know, here at E3, we, the muscle health, uh, that muscle sound provides that glycogen meter that's amazing so mm -hmm. if i have an athlete who is going into a triathlon or going into their first half marathon or looking to do you know some sort of activity at that level it's a pretty cool confidence scale to be able to scan and say hey look your muscles are full and ready to go the gas meter is full have fun or on the flip side gas meter is not full let's do these three or four or five things and let's get you reared up and ready for your event that's a huge confidence boost mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of the way we primarily use muscle sound here with our testing our performance testing every 12 weeks is i can show pictures of fat right most of my members their perceived level of fitness is dependent on how they fit in their jeans or how they look in the mirror let's just be honest right like people say fitness is like for, it's for my soul it's to make me feel better like let's be honest we want to look good too you know what i mean and so that's oftentimes our measure of success is how i feel and look mm -hmm. in my clothes or in the mirror and so now we have the opportunity to take seven pictures seven different sides across the body and say hey this is actually what it looks like see here's a little bit of gel that we use here's your skin check out all this fat and check out all this muscle and we even, when we do our testing, we have people flex. So like if I'm taking a, a measurement on a leg, I'll have them flex <laughs> while watching the screen and they can see the muscle move and the fat doesn't move. I don't need to have another conversation about why it's important to get a bit more muscle and less fat. Yeah. Right? It's on the screen. You just watch the movie. And so we get to take the science. I mean, this is heavy in science. And I just bring it back to an applicable level. Hey, every 12 weeks, we're going to take a picture of your fat. And our goal is to watch the fat get smaller, the muscle get bigger, and your volume, overall volume, goes down if your goal is to get leaner or whatever that may be for each individual. It's a lot less humiliating, too, than taking the, the classic before and after pictures, right? Oh, my gosh. So this is the... <laughs> Not that okay, there's anything I, wrong with this, that, but I did, no, the, uh, yeah, but I did the, the flexible dieting until it just ruined me. Um, it just was not good for me. Uh, but that was the thing, you know, it's just like every week you got to take those pictures. It's just like, oh, my God, this is, well, this is, this is so, a disaster. So what I don't need is so our target market in our small group program, our target market is early 30s to early 50s. Right. Mm -hmm. The last thing I need to do is convince a bunch of women and men at 43 or 44 years old. Hey, you need to come in today, bring a swimsuit or board shorts and we're going to take pictures of you like that is not the, yeah, I got several of them. Pictures would be fantastic, okay? Yeah. But I got some of them that it would just be a nightmare of an interaction. Oh, yeah. You know? It's, it's humbling, to say the least. And you can't have well, an for after. some of us. Yeah, well, you can't have an after without a before, and that's the, <laughs> yeah. the one that's not the best to take. So, Cool, yeah. So you get the seven shots. Now it's glycogen. So is that, that's going to be pretty uh, fundamental to the diet, too, right? Is that how you're going to treat the glycogen levels in the muscles is like, you need to eat some oatmeal or I, I don't know too much about the science of it, but. Yeah, I mean, the key thing is all about recovery and readiness to go. So mm -hmm. where Muscle Sun has been really successful is with professional athletes. We work with the Rockies, we work with the Rapids, uh, we work with major soccer teams around the world. <laughs> and they uh, use us uh, every Friday uh, purely to see if their players are ready to go on a Sunday. So they are essentially looking at exactly what Justin said, are there fuel tanks? at their optimal level for Sunday. And if not, they've still got 48 hours to make some changes, whether it be they need to sleep better, whether they need to um, recover in terms of having a massage, or whether it could be nutritionally. Um, so it could be sleep, it could sleep be food, anything, massage. You know, one of our most notable teams is we work with the women's US Rio track cycling team. 
And they were having huge problems every time they traveled to Hong Kong, et cetera. They were, they were getting smashed really badly, not just by the British team, who eventually they did lose to. You can hear with my accent, I'm not too despondent about that. You're from the South, right? I'm from the South. <laughs> I'm actually from the North, <laughs> very North. I want to uh, get to that, but yeah. keep going. Um, what's in, what was interesting, though, is that every time they went to Hong Kong or they went to Europe, they were really, really struggling badly because mm -hmm. um, they ended up at Rio. They broke the world record twice. They came second to the British team. They did fantastic. So we just looked at the system of what was happening when they got off the plane. And they had an old coach who really was about, let's go ride the plane out of our legs, which was stupid because they were dehydrated. Their fuel levels were down. They were tired, etc. So what we started doing was treating each of those five cyclists, there ended up being four in the team, individually in a different way. So we would look at their fuel levels, we would look at their sleep, we would look at their travel, we would look at their hydration, and take it from there. Cool. And all of those things then will kind of contribute to muscle recovery. And you can see it on the ultrasound. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a score. So we have in our ultrasound, we have what's called a, a fuel rating. So we have got some of the very top athletes. Um, so again, obviously, I would never name this, but a very famous uh, basketball player who... You know, you could probably think of a sound to make up his name. Uh, we know him when he's at his optimal fueled level at rest, we can see his level. At the bottom end of our scale, we've got over 5,000 scans of people in an ICU. So we know the worst when your muscle is being absolutely stripped of glycogen because we're trying to keep you alive. So we have this amazing scale where anybody in the world can see where they sit in terms of their fuel rating against anybody else in the world, from supreme athlete down to somebody in a traumatic uh, situation. And I always describe it as you're either a Prius, you're a Mercedes, or you're a Ferrari. Or you're a station wagon like Oh, you're a station you know? wagon, whichever <laughs> goes. But each, each one of you, though, here's the interesting bit. You all have a fuel tank that you can either fill or empty. It yeah. doesn't matter if you're a Prius or a Ferrari or whatever. You've got your own fuel tank. And that's what our system does. It will look at how you deplete your fuel tank, irrespective of where you are. Now, you can move from a Prius to a Mercedes. That's what these guys do here. I'm sure they've got some Mercedes that have gone to Ferraris here mm -hmm. at E3. Um, but what you really want to do is to make sure that you're not going to get injured, that you're ready to go in an event, is make sure that your fuel tank is ready to go. And I'd assume that you'd probably, the threshold is kind of your own personal threshold, right? You're going to, the, 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 where you fall is, is going to be different from where somebody else's falls. So you have to kind of get it done regularly so you know where you are in correlation to your best and weakest. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I'll take the E3 example here. So I do measure my body comp regularly like they do here. Mm -hmm. And actually, I shift 2% at the most. And in the winter, I go up a little bit. In the summer, I come down a little bit. That's actually of no relevance to me. And, you know, I'm 54 years old now. I'm really interested in my lean body mass. I want to make sure that my lean body mass stays high. And being egotistical, I want to reduce the millimeters of fat on my stomach. You know, I have a very hot wife. I want to make sure that she remains my wife. So I want to make sure that I look in shape and do that. So the what? overall percentage of body fat I don't really <laughs> care about. What I really care about is where I've got that body fat, but more importantly is I'm keeping that lean body mass up so I can at least keep close to her and see her when we're on the trail hiking. Yeah. You know, at least I'm somewhere behind her, but I'm kind of close. Well, and you can, you can keep her with you. I mean, I'm a little nervous. I got a really hot wife, too, and I feel like I, I ha I've let her down already. I need the muscle <laughs> sound in my life. So, well, it's, it actually, here's, <laughs> this is some real-life coaching right here. What I would say, as somebody who is constantly scanning our athletes in yeah. spring, summer, fall, winter, I would say, hey, the roller coaster doesn't work, Andy. At 54, eventually, the roller coaster is not going to go the other way, right? Yeah. Eventually, you're going to keep fighting this, like, I'm up to, I'm down to, I'm up to, I'm down to. And one of the great things with the way we use our data is that it provides, each athlete gets a printout, and they'll show a trend line analysis of where they've been. Mm -hmm. And so you can start to say, hey, are you done beating your head against the wall every March, being happy in August, and then just accepting, I call it complacency, <laughs> through those winter months? Let's keep the trend in the right direction. And now with data, that's irrefutable, right? Mm -hmm. It's not personal understanding of myself. It's actual understanding of myself. Sure. Um, we can start to beat that back. And I can get somebody like Andy at that point saying, hey, okay, well, we're not going to do that this year. And let's have the ball rolling in the right way. I yeah. know that there's no way am I going to reduce 5 or 6% body fat anymore. I like my lifestyle too much. <laughs> I like my glass of wine. I like my beer, etc. I know that. Yeah. It's not important. But I, I do actually care whether I can you know, bend down in the same way, that I can, you know, I can still get up that hike. I, I did a five-day trip in Chamonix in France last year and did a, 
a 6,000 foot climb, 12 hour, that's what I want to do yeah. to get older. And that's all about keeping fit and keeping your lean body mass. And you know, a wearable doing 10,000 steps doesn't tell me that. Right. It doesn't tell me whether I've got that fitness level, whether I'm ready to go, whether mm -hmm. I've recovered at that level, whether I've got that lean body mass or strength. And half of it is psychological. If you look at most of our athletes, most of the professional athletes are pretty good at monitoring their diet. They've got great coaches. There's sometimes they just need it. Uh, you know, am I, is my score, am I okay? Am I optimal? Mm -hmm. am, I ready, am I ready to go? You know, uh, the Rockies have just spent the last uh, month and they have been getting the baseline figures. Because the other thing we really do is we get your baseline figure just in case something does go wrong. Mm -hmm. So with a professional athlete, if they get injured, say they injure the left leg, we can manage them back up to the right leg. We know the baseline, baseline figures and we can help them to recover to nice. make sure that muscle is optimal so they don't go again too early. Yeah, so it can give you kind of a, if you're a coach and the guy's like, I'm ready to go, it gives you an, a little, another insight to, they might be pulling your leg a little well, bit. Well, interesting, you talked about CrossFit, is that we, there was a study done at South Carolina uh, University or college, and they looked at CrossFitters, and they literally studied them to see if they'd recovered after five days of doing CrossFit every single day. And they simply asked them to fill in a questionnaire, are you ready to go? Then they used our system when we looked at the quadricep muscle and we looked at the calf muscle. Most of the quads were recovered each day. Every single day, their gastrocs and their calves were not recovered. No so they felt they were ready to go. Their muscles were absolutely not recovered because they weren't allowing time to rest or fuel or whatever it was. Hmm. So that's what our science can sometimes do. A bit like you were talking about the body fat. You just can't, you can't lie. We're looking inside the muscle. It's a picture. Ultrasound is a picture. Right. There's no sucking it in to the ultrasound. Yeah, exactly. You can't like dehydrate yourself and and uh, and be affected in that way. You know where I see it really applicable to is is for acute performances, right? I, I train jujitsu, and a lot of my friends are professional fighters, and you know, the the life of a professional fighter is is god awful. You know what I mean? Mostly because they deplete themselves so much before the fight. You know, the weigh in, most of those guys are cutting at least 15 pounds, you know, going into it. So could you could you ver use the machine to to check on like hydration levels and to double check? I mean, it's kind of with fighting, it's a little past the point of no return. Right. You weighed in, you made weight. You're going to fight. Right. No matter what. There's no saying no. Um, but can you would you be able to use the muscle sound to say, hey, you need more X, Y, Z, or... Oh, absolutely. You'd be, you'd be able to look at the fuel levels to get them back up to the optimal level. Uh, it's not so much about hydration. It's yeah. about your actual fuel. Absolutely. Yeah. You can use that to come... Can you uh, manage it back up exactly for kilograms or grams of uh, carbohydrate? No, you can't. But you could... You, you would be able to see generally, like, okay, you you had enough Pedialyte or whatever. It could be a confidence booster, I suppose, if you're a fighter and you're going in and you can see the difference. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the, the top cyclists, they will deplete themselves as part of the training regime and then they will load as they go to an event. We can get them to load up to the level where they're at that optimal, uh, at that optimal level. Nice. Cool. Um, well, let's go into the, the, the foundation of the, of the business and kind of how you had the idea of this and how you brought it to life. Yeah, so uh, like I said, this was um, brought by two CU doctors. Um, they were playing around with it um, at Boulder, and they suddenly found a correlation between ultrasound and fuel levels and depletion levels. Uh, uh, they then uh, worked with a guy called Steve Kurtz, uh, who was one of the guys that um, started the Rockies here, um, and started taking it to market and started taking it out to professional teams. And how did you become involved? Um, so I... Uh, my originally, uh, my background is I was the CEO of a wearable uh, tech company uh, in the UK, um, and through our um, one of our corporate finance houses there, they introduced me to Muscle Sound, um, and I consulted for them for six months, and then took over as CEO last uh, last July. Tremendous, cool. So let's talk about your history. Where are you from? I'm Scottish. You're Scottish. I'm Scottish. Um, spent 25, 30 years of my life working in the UK, uh, predominantly working in sports and fitness, mm -hmm. uh, selling in programs into gyms, into fitness centers. Uh, like I said, the last, last role I had was the CEO of a wearable tech. We were taking things like Polar and Garmin and, in essence, turning that into a medical 
um, standard um, uh, standard device, but always lived and worked in sports and health and uh, health and fitness. And was that was basically Muscle Sound what brought you to Boulder or? No, no, I actually ca- I actually uh, came here because we originally. I uh, used to own a company called Fitness Professionals in the UK, and we bought two companies here. We bought a company called Personal Training on the Net and a company called PTA Global. Um, these were uh, educational training tools for personal trainers, um, and we bought those, and that's what, that's what brought me here to Denver originally. Cool. And then that's when you met the doctors at CU Boulder, the, and, and kind of one thing led to another, and now the president and CEO. Fantastic. Um, who are your kind of target personas? Who are you looking to market this to? Yeah, we, we have two divisions. We have what we call the sports and fitness division. So that's professional teams. So NFL teams, MLB teams, Major League Soccer, Olympic teams. Uh, we work with sports medicine docs, physical therapists, chiropractors, anybody who is working with those types of, uh, of, uh, of athletes. Uh, then on the flip side, we've now got a new medical division that we're just launching. Uh, where we're starting to work with children's hospitals, cancer hospitals, et cetera, because our overriding factor is we look at the health of your muscle and that when you get into any traumatic situation, whether it be cancer or we're working with some two-year-olds who have got problems with their hearts in children's hospitals, et cetera. Car accident. Um, anything like that, mm-hmm. uh, you need to then uh, rehab yourself back up to where you, where you were. So if someone's had a hip replacement, we can look at the good hip to the bad hip. Uh, so we've got a whole new medical division where we're focusing on the, you know, in the, in the past, everyone focuses on your BMI, mm-hmm. uh, not really looking at what's happening to your muscle. We are all about muscle health, and muscle health can be your size, your quality, the composition, the fuel level, et cetera, uh, which we think will take over from things like BMI in the future. Yeah, I like that focus, too, because if you're hyper-focused on the fat, it, may, it might be the wrong focus for you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's about muscle. Sometimes it actually is about uh, body fat. You know, if you're sure. a, a long-distance uh, free water swimmer, you need body fat. Right. Maybe that's what I should pursue. It sounds <laughs> like I'm a natural <laughs> fit for that. <laughs> that's right. Nice. Um, no, you know, there's something to be said about body fat, too. I mean, it's some of the most elite athletes in the world in the NFL these guys aren't that lean you know what I mean they're super athletes yeah we actually had a 350 pound linebacker who came to us and we looked at his fuel levels and he was in essence scoring 25 percent of what he should be and his on his fuel rating Um, and we talked about what his issue issue was he was about to try and make his weight for the Mm preseason struggling so he restricted his diet wasn't performing as well so we taught him about changing his diet upping his carbohydrates again got him up to his optimal level. He pl- first time in his whole history, he played all 16 games. Tremendous. Team went to the playoffs. They did, uh, they did really well. Sometimes people think carbs are bad, but actually for someone like him, it's really important. It's really good. And really you, important. Everyone has kind of their own threshold, I suppose, so that you have to have that kind of personalization to monitor it. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Nice. Um, it, it, what's proprietary about kind of your product? Is it the software? Is it the hardware or both? No, the hardware, we can use any ultrasound. Sure. So there's nothing proprietary about that. We work with all the different ultrasound uh, manufacturers. It's, uh, it's absolutely is our techniques for being able to measure our uh, muscle fuel, body composition. Uh, we have patents on all of those things that mm-hmm. relate to the process and how we measure uh, how, we, how we measure all of our muscle health diagnostics. And would, that be, would there be like a training program that goes along with Muscle sound? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. We, we uh, educate and train people why, why is it important, how to, um, and then, of course, then uh, longitudinally look at, you know, what do you do with this data? And, and that's where Justin and the guys here are perfect because they will use our data to make really good judgments on, uh, on what they're doing. Yeah. That's awesome. It's okay. <laughs> it actually it doesn't. These are pretty directional. So unless, I mean, I, I record at Central Market sometimes. It's like loud as hell, but doesn't get picked up so it works um nice okay so what does kind of growth look like um kind of in how how what is kind of your marketing funnel to find um these target personas yeah i mean in the in the sports world we've been lucky because athletic directors and sports medicine docs move teams yeah once people start to use us it's it grows pretty exponentially so we've done very well um, the mls are about to use us for a uh, four-team trial and if that uh, goes well, then it will be mandatory mm-hmm. um, that, you, that you use our system for recovery and readiness. 
Uh, in terms of uh, physical therapy, sports medicine, dogs, etc., we've created a cash model for them. So we've shown a model as to how they can make money from it, so it doesn't always have to go through insurance, uh, how they can provide these services. The medical world, that's a whole new world. We're just starting that world. We're yeah. just working on our HIPAA compliance. We're just uh, going through the final process of FDA clearance. Uh, that'll mean a whole new round of funding for us if that goes well. Why would there be HIPAA uh, compliance issues if it's a standardized kind of... Um uh, ultrasound unit. We're sending. So what happens is our uh, the image goes into the cloud, and our oh, algorithm it's collapses thing. it. It's a privacy thing. Yeah. Now we use unique patient ID. Where we have all the things in place because you imagine we're working with very famous athletes. We don't want anything going to the cloud that can be recognized in the cloud. There are still regulations you've got to go through for medical and HIPAA that are even tighter than that. Sure, that makes sense. So what's it like um, presenting a product to major league sports? Is there a qualification you have to get from the league and then it goes to a team level? Or it sounds like with um, MLS, it's kind of an adoption uh, for all the teams through the league. Yeah, I think uh, you know major league baseball is where we've done very well. and mm -hmm. uh, We've been very successful there. And a lot of that is down to people like Keith Duggar at the Rockies, um, who was one of the first early adopters of us. They're now into the fifth year uh, working with us. And if you talk to Keith, he would say to you is that we've had a big effect on them limiting soft tissue injuries, helping the performance of their team, getting them recovered and getting them ready to go. So I think our adoption has been a lot in the professional sports as a result of some very key influential people. We've got the same in NFL. We've got a person in, in the MLS. We've got people who are out there talking about us. Nice. And well, obviously the guys here at E3 have been very helpful in terms of us getting out into that fitness and gym, uh, and gym world. And th this is our world. It's a, it's a world of where a gym takes seriously the results that the members are getting. Yeah, it, it, and that seems like the biggest opportunity for growth, right? Because, I mean, professional sports, there's how many of those guys in the world? A thousand. Yeah, you know, you know. Where if you can kind of get into, like, me, where it's like, you know, you can, you can kind of, um, there's just a l much larger market. And maybe you can talk about what that session would look like. So if I sit down for this, is it... Are you going kind of through a, a checklist of like glycogen levels, this, 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 this? These are the, the basis on which we're going to kind of judge progress. And then there's recommendations yeah. that come kind of specialized so, for that. So I, I'll talk quickly and I'll, I'll let uh, Clint explain here. But in essence, we have an assessment. So it's just like if you go to the spa, you decide which type of massage you're going to have. You're going to turn up to one of our centers. So it might be a sports medicine doc or a physical therapist. You might turn up and say, I've got really bad sciatica down the right side of my body. So the doc will say, okay, let me use the assessment protocol for muscle sound to look at your right to left and look what's going on. What is the difference? Where's the problem? From that, they will then sit down and work out a treatment and a process of actually working on it and then keep referring back and saying, hey, look, you're 10% back up. You're nearly balanced. You're nearly symmetrical. So we always are on the basis of there's an assessment based on the persona, or the, or what it is that you're trying to achieve, improve, fix, uh, and then we then produce the data. But the professional, just like Justin here, is the person who then will actually work with you to then improve, improve that data. Cool. So for you specifically, the 299 package is including the small group. You're getting kind of dietary instruction. You're getting kind of the muscle sound. How would that look? Yeah, so we use the, so we use the body comp section of the muscle sound every three months. So every three months we get a accurate, great picture look at what's inside the body. And so that's the way we use body comp. Now with the muscle health, we focus that towards, like I said earlier, the athletes in here that do events. Yeah. And we help map that around those events. Now, you talked a bit about the pro sports using this. You know, the truth is, are you familiar with cryotherapy? Yeah. Are you familiar with hydration IV bars, mm -hmm. are you familiar with oxygen bars. This is stuff pro sports have been using forever. Float labs. Right, float yeah. labs. Like yeah. So when we watch Sports Center at night and we find out what LeBron James is doing for recovery or what, you know, as a, what I call just regular athlete, right, just as a consumer of fitness, I want to do that stuff, mm -hmm. right? And you're seeing that popular. Cryo bars are huge. Mm -hmm. IV bars are huge. And so being able to provide technology like this that was once reserved for pro athletes to the regular athlete just ups not just the quality of coaching we can provide, mm -hmm. but can upload the, the quality of an experience that one of my athletes has just here in a training center. Yeah. 
and that's well, what it, helps. It, it, you can you got to chart those gains. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're <laughs> if you're eating the eggs and doing the protein shakes, you want to make sure that it's working. Yeah, I mean, I'm about to step <laughs> out right now and go beat these four guys up in a workout, and they need to know why they're doing this. You know, and and these numbers help them know why they're doing it. Cool. Well, thanks, for, thanks, Justin. Are you going to go do that now? Yeah, I'm going to go jump. So if you hear me just screaming at people, I'm not killing anybody. We're just doing our job. <laughs> yeah, no I'll problem. For it. Yeah, don't hold back. Don't, don't hold back on our account. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Thanks, buddy. Cool. So kind of back to the marketing. It sounds like um, professional sports, I mean, if you talk about like viral marketing having or influencers... That's just what it is. I mean, it's it's people at the very top of their game, and they're all exceptionally competitive. So if someone has a new gadget, they're going to want it. Um, outside of that, like, how would you be reaching, like, Justin and kind of expanding into kind of more personal trainers and that kind of coaching environment? Yeah, we, we attend traditional health and fitness shows. Mm -hmm. We use various media um, outlets. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got our own PR company that... Um, that you know, get out and outreach to different magazines and publications. But for us, the way we feel we reach it the best is to show the difference with what we are doing in relation to other people who are trying to take metrics on you. So within body composition, we'll look at, okay, what's the gold standard? The gold standard is, is deemed to be DEXA, an MRI machine. Very expensive, you can only use it so often. Uh, the old gold standard was calipers, where they used to pinch you mm -hmm. to do this. Now you've got all these bioimpedance machines where you stand on them and they send a pulse through you. Uh, each one of those has got its own problems from cost to accuracy, etc. So, so one of the ways we market it is we just go out and say, hey, look, this it's takes a picture. Easier. And particularly with, with women and body comps, it, it takes a picture just like it did of your baby. Yeah. Hey, you can't lie. You can't, dehydration doesn't affect it. Hair doesn't affect it. Uh, there's no way that anything to do with uh, you holding your stomach in or anything is going to uh, is going to change it. You're not sticking a bunch of radiation through yourself too uh, too often. You're not spending thousands of dollars uh, on uh, on doing this, but you're getting a very very accurate. The idea pinching of what's happening also intimidating and uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. And, and you know the problem with that is that each individual person pinching it may pinch it slightly different. Right. Whereas when you take a picture, it's a picture, right? That's right. Whether we like it or not, it's a picture. <laughs> I like it. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> no, cool. So let's talk about the business model a little bit. You're selling the hardware. Is there a um, certification process? Is there anything else to supplement um, the sales of the product itself? Yeah, I mean, in essence, this is a very straightforward sale, is mm -hmm. that you, you get or you use the hardware you've got already. So mm -hmm. a lot of professional teams have the hardware. Mm -hmm. The big change was that the hardware is, is, you know, where an ultrasound used to be a big... Fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollar piece of equipment. Uh, you go into hospital; it's they call it portable, but only because it's on a trolley. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a great big laptop, intimidating. Now they would be thirty five, forty thousand dollars. Now the actual probe, or what's called the transducer. So th if you're thinking about taking a picture of your baby, the bit they put on there, they've put the ultrasound in there, and it plugs into a tablet or a phone. You're now at the stage where you're paying eight grand for those, those uh, outright, or there are rental models, you know, so you can rent these things for 200 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So now it's open to, to anybody. And then it's a strict SaaS model. It's a software mm -hmm. based on, you can either do unlimited based on the number of athletes you've got if you're a team. You can do a per session cost. So all the guys in physical therapy and sports medicine who are charging for it, they just pay an amount per mm -hmm. scan or session. So they're not actually having to pay anything up front until they actually earn um, and some revenue. So um, kind of passing this, this seat, as it were, of the, for the, the, um, onto the consumer. So if you're, if you're um, a personal trainer, you sign somebody up, that's kind of an added incentive for them for the next package up, then you just pass that over for yeah, that. Yeah, so you know, like Justin was talking about, he sells these packages for like 100 bucks. Yeah. If he was doing the per scan session, he might be giving us between 5 and 10 bucks. Yeah. Cool. And so what would be the per seat model for if I said, uh, you know what, I just want five different clients, we'll say. What, what's the cost per seat? So you're talking, if you're doing a per session, it yeah. would be five to ten bucks a session that you, yeah. would, you would pay every time you uh, scan them. Or any uh, gyms, we do them based on size. So we do them from boutique up to large, large scale clubs. So boutique club like this, 250 members, large scale club, you know, let's say 24 hour fitness, 4,000 mm -hmm. members is going to pay more. You're paying anywhere from 250 to 500 bucks a month. Per 250 to 500, depending on the size of your business. The, the size of your business in the gym model. And then professional teams, because uh, some of those uh, guys, they use our athletic directors and performance directors for advice. 
uh, they would pay anywhere from 500 bucks to 2500 a month. Sure. So the actual unit yourself, you're saying that um, that you guys do sell those, I'm assuming, but they're we not... We pass them through. Yeah. We're not trying to make any money from Ultrasounds. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Um, 250. Nice. So um, tell me about kind of the UX of the app itself. So if, if uh, Justin is in here, he's got his own um, kind of gym that he enters into the app, and then he'll have basically a database of the customers he adds in, and then it stores all those pictures. So I guess for whatever reason, I was thinking, when you said picture, I was thinking like old school picture, but obviously it's just on your phone, right? So now it's an ultrasound image. So in yeah. essence what happens is that uh, the app on the tablet takes a picture of the muscle, uh, he then exports that up into the cloud, and our um, muscle sound app then grabs it, puts it through our algorithm, and then spits back numbers to him, spits back a report to him, which will show them where they sit on the scale, on the rating, show them the lean body mass, show them the millimeter sites, back in a report that they can then give to their, give to their customer. Cool. All of that's done in 15 seconds. Nice. And that report, is that something that the, the customer could log into too, or is that yeah, like a emailed link? it's directly to the customer. Yeah. Yeah, they get it. They cool. get it straight away. Now, some of the professional teams, it's the athletic director who shows it to the athlete. They don't give it to the athlete. Yeah. But they would then hold on to it and, and keep that as longitudinal data. Really? Why don't they give it to the athlete? Uh, the athletes, are, they don't really care about having <laughs> the report. Yeah. They just want to know what do I need to do. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. Some of them do. I mean, some of the more uh, individual-based athletes would. But some of the team guys, they'll just go, hey, am I ready for Sunday? Yeah, let me know what to do. They're let like, me know what to do. Do I need to go eat some more? You know, what do I need to do? They're like, do I need a Snickers and some chips? No, never. Never need that. Okay, bummer. Yeah. I'm waiting for the report that tells me I need that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Cool. So um, what, is, what does the rest of the year look like for you guys? Um, kind of what does growth look like this year? And then what's maybe a five to ten year out or exit look like? Yeah, I, I mean, I think... Uh, uh, our shareholders would want to know um, about an exit. For me, I love it. It's just fantastic. It's a great business to be in. Uh, I, I think I'd answer it in two ways. So this year is we've done very well already. We've picked up a bunch more baseball teams, a bunch more MLS teams. We've just um, done a deal with some more Olympic teams down in Colorado Springs. So the, that world is going great. We've got some fantastic models coming out of sports, uh, medicine, physical therapy, uh, the gym market is just starting to, 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 uh, to tick off. Uh, so all of that's going very well. And the original investment we took in the company was for that part of the world. The five-year plan uh, and probably the exit would be if we can prove out some very significant success in cancer hospitals, children's hospitals, etc. cetera, um, we're just little muscle sound. Yeah. To really hit the medical world, I think that's where an exit would come. I think... I think Big Pharma or, or an ultrasound manufacturer or somebody would come and take us out. Nice. I think that's the I think that's the answer to your longer term. Sure. Yeah. It, would there be any other peripherals? I mean, what's cool about it is because it is the software and you can just plug. I mean, that's the ultrasound thing is what you're saying? It's a, that's amazing. It's tiny. It's the size of a mouse. Yep. Like size a, of a mouse plugs into a tablet or a phone. Plugs it's right into now. the tablet and it's ready to go. Yeah. Are there any other peripherals where you could say, hey, we're already measuring um, your glycogen with ultrasound, you know, plug in, I don't know, lasers and measure something else? Is yeah, that what well, well, we, we do have uh, uh, some performance data where we link it to other performance data of other tools. Yeah. We're not hardware tools. Yeah. Where muscle sound is going is that we have body comp, we have muscle fuel, muscle symmetry, muscle health. Uh, the next stage we potentially would go is to things like brain sound, cardiac sound. Yeah. So we are about the ultrasound. We found a niche. We're good at it. That's where we've secured some great patents. Uh, we're going to stick to that because we believe that if we start bringing in too many other pieces of hardware, it will get confusing. Then you have to go back to your scientific validation and validate it with all those other tools. Whereas it's ultrasound, it's ultrasound. You know, with the brain, I mean, can you use ultrasound to measure what's the, what's the big one with athletes? Uh, well, concussion. Concussion. So we're just about to, we're literally about to start a concussion study with a hospital yeah. um, to look at the effects of muscle health um, uh, on, you know, but after, obviously we don't know when a concussion is going to go, and looking at their recovery and yeah. readiness of people who have suffered concussion. Uh, yeah. That's a big study that we're about to uh, do with a big hospital. Yeah, that'll be massive, you know. I mean, when you think about athletes, too, I mean, for us, you know, 
people, or, uh, so I'll just see me, for me, trying to not let watch the water run down the drain, that's the kind of athlete I am, but I think the majority of athletes in this country are kids, you know? And so if you're talking about, like, you know, concussions, I mean, football, even soccer, you know, it's, it's pretty frequent. It is. To, you it know, is. To be able to assess that, I think, would be a, a really good um, kind of tool in a doctor's tool bag. Um, how many current users or subscribers do you guys have now? Uh, I mean, in terms of in terms of teams, we are you know in 40 or 50 teams, and in terms of users and subscribers, I mean, the best way for me to tell you that is in terms of scans. We have over 250,000 scan sessions in our database, so we've done a lot, a lot of work. That's tough. And in each one of those scan sessions, there could be anywhere from eight to 12 individual pictures. Users. So it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. It's a big yeah. database now. Yeah. Nice. Um, when the when the business was founded, how did you finance the business? It's been financed um, mainly, mainly by angel investment. Mm -hmm. uh, we've now got some strategic investment coming from uh, some of the ultrasound manufacturers, uh, but predominantly angel investment, friends and family. Uh, some you know, there's some significant and interesting investors from healthcare. Mm -hmm. The old Kansas City chief general manager is an investor. So, it's, it's a real eclectic bunch, actually. Were they equity stakes or all equity stakes? Yeah. What uh, was some of them took convertible notes. Yeah. What was the uh, the kind of opening angel investment round? Uh, that is a very good question because that was before my time. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I'm not going to bullshit that answer. I don't know the answer <laughs> to that. Nice. Right, do you, could you a rough guess with pl uh, a, a one million above? Oh, it's one million above. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one million okay. above. Yeah. There's been uh, th there's been three rounds. Um, and pretty much all of them have re-upped. Uh, there's a current, we've just finished another current round uh, of 1.3 million. Uh, and we're at the stage where by now we've got uh, investment coming from um, some interesting uh, ultrasound manufacturers and even some of the um, software guys are now uh, seriously talking to us about getting in, particularly in the medical side. Yeah, interesting. So the ultrasound manufacturers are investing, smart. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, we're helping their sales. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It seems uh, uh, pretty symbiotic. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Um, well, it sounds amazing. Uh, it's a fun, it's a very fun business and it's very eclectic. And you know, the nice thing about it is w I love helping people in fitness. Yeah. Absolutely love. And I'm, I'm a mad, mad sports guy. Yeah. You know, I'm, uh, what are your sports? I, 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 played, I played soccer. Yeah. I played soccer. So I'm a massive Celtic fan from Scotland. But what's really interesting, what gets me out of bed is that when a children's hospital comes and says to me, we want to use your system to help two-year-old babies that have got a heart defect, that gets me out of bed. Yeah. When someone says we want to look at the muscle health of people pre and post cancer, or we even want to look at the muscle health of families of people who have died from cancer, that really gets me out of bed. Yeah. That's where our muscle sound is really going to get some traction. That's what's really exciting about it. Yeah. It's amazing. And it, it's just, um, you know, wearables, any kind of like all the data that's, that's happening right now and the ability to share the information is really exciting, I think. And now with this, I know in the medical industry, um, sharing your own personal data is difficult. It seems like with this, because you're getting email updates, that you have the ability then to, you're storing all your own information, right? Yeah, so we, we own all of the big data. Yeah. Uh, but we have very strict privacy laws. We use unique patient IDs, um, but we've got some amazing case studies. But from the consumer side, studies. like if it was me and I was getting the emails and it's like, I have those. So if I was to start, you know, with Justin and then I ended up with John in yep. Boulder or whatever, then it's, you can transfer that information. It's Correct. Gonna, it's going to be the same. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Well, Andy, I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank Been you so much. To you. you bet. You too. So are you guys based in Denver then? Or? We are. We're based in Denver. Cool. Yeah, we're in the Cherry Creek area. Cool. Any uh, upcoming events or anything? Oh, we're, I mean, actually today we're at a show um, down in Florida for um, Tactical. We're with the Army and police. They get together and look at stuff. So uh, there's some great opportunities there for SWAT teams and all sorts. So we're at that event. Uh, the biggest event that's coming, actually, you should you should go. The American College of Sports Medicine show is actually here in Denver, uh, the, late in May and June. That's the next big event for, for us. So all of the sports medicine college guys from all around the world, researchers, come. Cool. That would be a, a great show for you to go. And I would love to people. check that out. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd want to, <laughs> although I'd want to ask everybody why they're not paying college athletes. 
I think that's the next big question in yeah, college athletics. I think athletics. these guys just train them. I don't think they have any say in it. <laughs> yeah, but I want them to say something on yeah, the record. I agree. Nice. Cool. Andy, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. Really Thank appreciate you very it. Much. You bet. And I appreciate all you guys listening. Thank you so much. Now, if you want to have or uh, get some more information, it's MuscleSound.com. And from MuscleSound.com, Andy, can they find uh, a practitioner or what can they expect when they yeah, go Yeah, we there? can point them in the right direction Okay. if people want to uh, come in. And, and if you are a business and you think this could help your business, you know, physical therapy, right down to beauty, mm-hmm. team, to get help, we can help you directly. Cool. So, yeah, absolutely. And I'd say our audience is probably 95% business owners or entrepreneurs yeah and most of them are located here in denver too so um definitely check that out musclesound.com also if you're looking for a gym um justin's over there training some guys right now um but it's e3-fitness.com and they are at the corner ish of mississippi and broadway um specifically 1165 south broadway so if you know where that whole foods is over uh, by Wash Park. They're right in that neighborhood. So um, it's a really cool gym. They, I mean, it's got, it reminds me of kind of like um, Lauren Landau's um, It's outfit. very like that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Very like that. Yeah. Like it's, it looks like um, really kind of the stuff that I would like to be working on when I'm training jujitsu now, you know, I'm 39. So the one thing that I need to work on is quickness, explosiveness, you know what I mean? So these kind of workouts, looks like what he's doing is very custom tailored, Oh my God! This guy's doing a Roman chair with a medicine ball between his <laughs> knees and doing That's shoulder press. That's our state treasurer. <laughs> Is it? That's our state treasurer. Oh my God! That looks like pure hell. <laughs> He's in the ninth ring of uh, hell right now. Um, but what a cool gym! Battle ropes, kettlebells, punching bags, and they do a cycling class, which um, Justin was very careful to point out is not spin. It's cycling class. So um, these guys, as you can hear, uh, are all really into cycling, as I'm sure you guys are. I actually did Lookout Mountain on Saturday. Just kick my ass. Totally kick my ass. Um, but hopefully you guys are, are staying in shape and enjoying the coming spring. Again, that's E3-Fitness.com and MuscleSound.com. Take it easy, guys. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How you doing? I hope you're doing fantastic. Great show today, fitness show. Today we're talking to Justin Hall, the owner of E3-Fitness.com. Justin, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, He's got a great spot here on 4th and Broadway where he's got about 250 members. They have an average of about 150 bucks a month, Um, and it's fantastic. Damn it. 